actually, I remember I was trying to figure out exactly how long ago since I was in a Unity Church. That was only about three, four years ago, I believe. And I'm so happy, and I just love you for having me come back. And Karen, I, I think she's a human angel, really is. And I think you're very, very fortunate to have such a wonderful, let's say, a missionary. I call a missionary. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm so happy also, of course, naturally. I'm happy all over, let's say that. And because there's so much more interest presently. And I believe, of course, naturally, uh, we're reaching a point that the change has got to be definitely evident in a larger scale. And my work with 35 years, naturally, struggling with so-called incurables, and that's what I love, because basically uh, I always get so excited when, when, uh, when they come to us and to the, uh, we call change of lifestyle, to living food, energy food. And they said, well, I couldn't be helped anyway. I've been to all kinds of doctors. I've been to clinics and, well, maybe five or 10 years or whatever. And that really excites me. And, and they tell me all the, you know, they keep telling me these conditions, you know, the, the diseases. I said, no, you don't have to tell me, please. I said, I'm, I know what happens because you have deficiency and toxemia. And then, of course, you have maybe one symptom to start off with, and then it develops because it depends where your weakness is. So you can have one or you can have 20. It doesn't really matter because when you begin to decide or you have made up your mind, have a desire. You see, desire is energy. So it's a positive energy that it seemingly centers or gives you a way out. That's what desire is really. And then I imagine you come here with desire and then of course it'd be useless for you just go home and do the same thing you've done if you have any problem. If you're not satisfied with your life, physically, mentally, emotionally, then as a spiritual being, of course, you've got to be satisfied. Then naturally, you're going to do something. And, of course, I always put this big emphasis, you've got to expect results. Why you expect results? Because you connect yourself with nature. You connect yourself with your higher self. This is what it's all about. When you really work with nature, get down to the, um, I call nitty gritty. Don't look for something over there. It's not going to happen. Or, or look for cures, because there isn't any because the body has to be provided with environment for health. That's all. So if you come with 20 different problems, are you ready to rebuild your health? Are you ready to give the body opportunity for self-healing? That's all you need, really. These are the tools. And I'm going to take you to Boston right now and, and a little bit on Puerto Rico too, because right now I'm running these two centers and uh, by the way, I was ready for the heat when I was 20. And I had cancer of the colon, arthritis, migraine headache, my hair was completely gray, something like you. And I had, you know, ready, say, either retire, go to nursing home, or I assume that I, I knew from the very beginning I had a mission. So naturally, why I needed to change, and that was, I'm 81, so you can imagine how many years ago was that. But believe me, I didn't have one blessed thing to work with. Not one thing, because I had to go out in a, in a vacant lots in the city, Boston, because there was no fruits and vegetables then, and gather the weeds and the grasses, because I knew about grasses. Because during the war in Lithuania, I naturally, we lived in our woods because they were fighting in the cities, and oh, I lived in the country, really. And so we lived on the grasses to survive. And, and then, of course, I learned a lot about weeds, not herbs, by the way. Herbs and weeds are two different things. And that's how I started to, to get my body back to health with only seeds and grains, not sprouted, until the winter came. 
And I said, oh God, please help me. What can I do? There's no grasses. And the grasses did not grow indoors, the regular grass. Did nothing happen. So then I said, please tell me what to do. And that's when the idea came to me, the seeds. Plant the seeds, I soaked them. And uh, I didn't sprout them because I didn't know about sprouting then until a little monkey came along and she was sick. She had no teeth. I gave her the seeds to chew. She didn't swallow them because she had no teeth. She was two years old. They pulled the monkey's teeth out that time. So I put it in between two wet towels to soften them and the sprouting began. And all these ideas, you see, there's no, no problem without solution. Absolutely none. All my years of work and struggle, I have never found any time that I had no solution for problem. So naturally, the, the idea came to me to plant indoors these seeds. And that's how the indoor gardens came into effect. I could go on and on explain to you the ideas that come from within yourself only. You can get a lot of things from outside guidance. That's what we try to do, guide you, but not tell you what to do because it's got to come from within. You have to become in tune with yourself because God within, naturally, if you quietly relax and not be worried, you know, worry and fear blocks the passage. You can't think what you need to do. So naturally, I'm going to show you the slides because basically visual is much better than my this talk. At first, I want to say that I have the three slides and three different phases. First is what it is, if you don't know about living food, because we give you that, what it is, replacements. In other words, nothing is taken away without replacements, because this is not a diet. And then the other is what it does. Third is generally, when we do long workshops, we go in a, in a very uh, slow explanation how. But I give you briefly a few little things, how. And naturally, also, you, you can have questions. That's why I'm kind of hurrying, because I want you to have uh, questions for me. And you know, it's nothing like getting in touch with you, really. I just love to come in there and just ask you, each individual, what is your problem? Why are you here? <laughs> it's really exciting, you know, to me. Because basically, you know, right away you sort of connect with them. And, uh, and I, I give group counseling, really. I like that better. Because each one, when you talk about them, what your problem is, are you addicted to so-and-so? And, and I would say, do this because your body is craving, because the deficiency you have. And if you supply the bis missing elements and nothing you want anymore, because you have plenty of energy, you don't need stimulants. You don't need anything to zip you up, so-called. <laughs> OK, what we're going to do, we're going to ship this, uh, this particular uh, screen on here. And you can see much better, this I think. Don't you think? Go into Boston and go into a living room also, where I have what we call indoor garden kitchen, naturally, uh, OK? And there you have a, uh, a sprouts, rejuvenate greens, seed cheese, a grain crisp, which is dehydrated. And of course, we use a little bit fruits and vegetables, and very little indeed in Puerto Rico, because we have such a mount, wonderful organic fruit there. Not in Boston, though. And you see the uh, replacement is definitely all there. We do not take away anything the body needs, OK? Uh, you'll be talking about balance, you see, balance nourishment. Now, another thing that what seed does, you see that small amount of seed, you get all these sprouts. And actually, that seed has inhibitor also. That means it's not as healthy even when you use the seed which is not cooked. But when you release that inhibitor and uh, the moisture and, and the um, uh, air and, and all the other warmth that goes with it, you multiply 10 times, 15 times in some of them. 
uh, the difference in, in this kind of nourishment, okay? And also the value. The value multiplies about 100 times from sprouting rather than from seeds. And then we go into this rejuvenate. This uh, naturally should be rejuvenate first, but nevertheless, the blending of the energy uh, nourishment, high energy nourishment is to call uh, old time, you know, we call the uh, uh, energy soup because it's filled with, with energy, easy to digest, and you have also recipes from that little booklet, so everything be there, we're gonna let you have these as reduction, and then you can rest assured, you can try it on yourself for at least two, three weeks and see what happens. The people with allergy, that's where we specialize right now, in Puerto Rico especially, and in Boston, people get better in about weeks. Anybody has allergies? See, boy, it's great. <laughs> I have customers now. <laughs> now, okay. Uh, we'll go in a little further with the questions about the allergies. Now, this is a complete meal. Matter of fact, Karen and I had uh, two meals already. We made it early this morning, and when we came back, from rushing from that um, video making, and we had five minutes to, to get our meal. It was ready for us in the refrigerator, the energy soup. And it's so fantastic. You know, I, li I lived on it for the past week in, the, in Michigan completely with using weeds only for greens. And I, I'm telling you, you, you just absolutely don't lose energy. You just feel great always. And Okay, now the veg kraut, why is veg kraut has been developed le lately, with a couple of years ago. We used to do s sauerkraut. Now we take the uh, uh, cauliflower, cabbage, beets and, and, uh, and carrots, grind it and put them in the crock and then there's some seaweed in there also. And then it slightly ferments. Then it's filled with enzymes and easy to digest this particular, we call underground vegetable, which most allergy people cannot digest it, okay? And now the most important thing, there's nothing more important really than connect with the Mother Earth. Because why? Because the enzymes in the balanced Mother Earth connects us with the higher selves because connects us with mother and father, which is God. See, that's the key to really help, to really become aware where our help really comes from. All these other things added to it, but we put big emphasis on that, that is completely balanced. We create our own earth in our own kitchens, okay? And there you have your dog and a cat and a neat. They complete live food vegetarians. And this, you, you know, actually the most healthiest animals you've ever seen. Now, a lot of people say, well, they're meat eaters, aren't they? Well, they are. We are not meat eaters, remember. Our colons is much longer than animals. But we got used to it, didn't we? Huh? Meat eating. You see what I mean? They adjust it also. And they become so healthy, you have no idea, you know, how healthy these animals. I had it for a whole year and, uh, you know, experiment with them. No fleas, nothing. And they, you know, the old dog was playing like a little puppy. You see, this is not just for health. This is for, you know, like um, retaining your, your years. You, in other words, you get younger instead of older. Okay, and the seeds, you see the seeds, the grains, nuts, that's all you really need. Work with them in a different ways. Basically, we should encourage the farmers, we should really encourage the farmers to go back. Now, I, I was watching or rather reading uh, an article just 
yesterday and he said that don't spray to the farmers, don't spray your crops. And it's, it's so sad indeed because those crops are going to be attacked by the bugs because they are unhealthy. First, you've got to encourage people to grow or to change the earth to a healthy earth. Then there'd be no bugs to, to spray. And now they tell them, don't spray because we, we don't want spray anymore. What's happening right now, they're radiating the food, they're radiating the, uh, or rather, they're making a the factory food. If you think you've got allergies now, wait. Do you see this cholesterol-free food that's factory-made? You hear about it? Factory-made. Only threw, uh, they threw in a few soybeans to keep it together, these chemicals. You're going to have your cheese, you're going to have your uh, milk, uh, and you're going to have your meat, all dairy, and even eggs. Exactly look like real. And taste better, by the way. Fresher. <laughs> because the chemicals entice you to become addicted to it. That's all it is. So actually, the seeds, the grains, is the key to us. And be in control of your own nourishment. This is the key. Okay? And then again, another thing. This is from a kitchen scraps only. Just kitchen scraps that you throw away, maybe in down the drain. You know, we build earth with that, earth. I raise my little earthworms in my kitchen. Earthworms, I love them. Darwin said, by the way, when the earthworms disappear from the planet, from the earth, see if you find any in the, in the chemical soil. There's no earthworms. Even then our, our humanity also began to disappear. Isn't that so with the, because of AIDS and stuff? Okay. Now there's a difference. You have on the left hand side organically with a compost. On the right hand side is ordinary earth. An organic earth, that. But there's your compost on the left hand side. See, there's a difference. Okay. And again, this indoor garden is so exciting. Karen is enjoying it, and believe me, you have no idea how fortunate you are to have somebody that's raising these in the, in the greenhouse. And that's going to also encourage people to, re to rent space in the greenhouses. You don't want to do it in the kitchen. And you know these babies on the left-hand side coming, say, come on, take that tray off. I wanted some sun. Do you see them coming up, raising that? Come on, get up. And you see, they, they are completely uh, covered to keep it there for three days after you plant it. In seven days, you have, and this has been recycled, I mean, the, to be recycled. This happens to be the mats you take uh, the greens, the wheatgrass off, and that becomes your fertilizer also, besides the uh, kitchen scraps. See, we raise around earth with earthworms with hundreds and hundreds of microbes. And believe me, when you look at this, uh, when, you, when you get your little booklet, and you look at this back of the cover, and you see the, uh, all the um, microbes and the earthworms, and when a person eats, look at the immune system, completely in charge, nothing to get in, in that immune system, because it's strong. The white cells right on act like, like little dogs. You know, watch dogs, you see them near your door. And then you, when you put the ke chemical fertilizer here, and there your bugs are on the plants, on your whatever you grow, and then your immune system is all out of balance, weak, and the little bad guys come in. That's all. <laughs> Simple English. <laughs> OK? <laughs> That's what it is. And now the wheatgrass and the greens, which is sunflower, and again, you'll be learning about that, OK? And this happens to be our, our, some of our staff and students in Boston, two-week program we have in Boston. And we teach, of course, learn by doing. You've got to have center here, really, because it's ridiculous to have to go to Boston or Puerto Rico, because you want to have center right here. And you have to help Karen to make it possible, OK? 
And we teach people learn by doing. Learn by doing. You've got to get involved. Because basically, you get connected with it, don't you see? If you, have, if you just do it, unless you, know, you just want to sit around and say, oh, that's nice, nothing happens. <laughs> OK? You see, now this is what we call dehydration. We dehydrate the bread. This happens to be sprouted, wheat, blended, with banana thrown in and then dehydrated, you break it up in pieces. I have some of those protein nuggets there, by the way. These come from Puerto Rico. And uh, so you can also, yeah. Yeah, okay. And we make pizza too. So we're not deprive you of pizza either. And uh, <laughs> you wanna know how to make it? Okay. All you do is merely get zucchini. You know zucchini, squash. You cut it slices very thin. And then you, you put it on, uh, you, right there you have some uh, red pepper, mushrooms, and some seed cheese from sunflower, and then dehydrate it, you have your pizza. Simple as that. And milk. Now a lot of people say, what about our children? They need milk. By the way, you know, I was reading the other day, you know our country is very slow, by the way. I learned from, from India, that is, the scientists came out seven years ago, scientific, that no child could ever digest cow's milk, seven years ago. And then they, they came in, in Israel, also in science research, that from the milk from dairy you get arthritis, asthma, cataracts, uh, gallstones, well, you, you know, name it, from dairy. And yet we're slow, we just recognize that something about milk the children can't drink. Just, just yesterday I was reading about it. Now you make milk from, from almonds, you make milk from sunflower, uh, from the uh, uh, pumpkin, sesame, and we have loads of uh, naturally uh, coconuts in Puerto Rico, we make milk all the time, coconut. But the water is not milk, by the way. When you let the water drain, it's not milk. But the milk is a nut. It's the freshest thing. And I, if I had time, I'd show you how to open a coconut. But, you know, we have to, next time we have to have longer workshop, okay? And this seed cheese. Seed cheese is only, you take sunflower, soak it five hours, and then you blend it with the rejuvelac, and then of course you drain it, put it in the, in the sprout bag, you drain it overnight, and then you put some, these cut up vegetables, and then you can shape it or use it in about seven different ways. And that protein nugget is made from sunflower too. Pardon? Yeah, show them. The sunflower, you see, this is only five hours soaking, one day sprouting. It's better not sprout longer than one day. And these are, happens to be four beans. This for <laughs> our energy soup. There are four beans for, uh, you know, I use these bags all the time because I travel so much. I, I do uh, my energy soup with this because they're not sprouted, the poor guys. Uh, this green peas, lentils, and mung beans. And they are soaked for about 10 hours and then sprouted three days. And I keep that refrigerator for my energy soup to make the real balance, you know, with greens and, um, and other things, which is in your book anyway. Okay? And now, uh, I don't know if you can read that. Can you read that, dear one? The closer I get to it and read it. The alfalfa is the first one. In the middle you have, besides the other seeds, go down lower. And then the very bottom for protein you have rice the very bottom, brown, brown rice. <clears throat> so actually this is done by the government. And uh, again, the seeds are, by the way, if you're interested in protein and they're interested in uh, naturally uh, utilizing the earth, the best advantage, from one acre land you can only raise 40 pounds protein of flesh. From the same acre land you grow 
the, these kind of things which you see there way up there, instead meat there, for 100 pounds, the same acre land. So you see, your land is dwindling too, remember that? Okay. And now we're going to make rejuvelac, which is extremely important. There's three things that are very important to you have, not to have everything all at once, but basically rejuvelac, making energy soup, and that sea cheese, those are things that are very important. You can buy the greens, you can buy the wheatgrass, but basically uh, sprouting in that kind of way, simple way, and also doing the rejuvelac is very, very important. The rejuvelac, soft summer wheat, and you soak it about eight hours, and then you let it sprout, okay? You let it sprout two days, and you leave that for 24 hours. You know, I let my wheat sprout before I go away from my place home, and then when I get there, I put that in the jar. I have to use the jar for that. And next morning, I have my rejuvelac. What this does is so fantastic because your water is not, you know, healthy. And your drinks are not healthy, right? And this has more, I mean, better vitamin C than even your orange juice have, unless you get organic from a tree, fresh. And at the same time, it has vitamin E, which is a youth vitamin. Because vitamin E is anti-pollutant vitamin, and that's why when we blend our energy soup, we can keep it for the whole day for that reason. And also, it's filled with enzymes because the fact everything fermented is the key to solve our energy, these kind of problems which people are afflicted now with allergies is the key, okay? So you see, naturally, every one, every day, for three days, you pour the water off, put some more water in for the next day, and so forth and so on, and that kind of beverage costs you three cents a quart. But if you want to make champagne, would you like to make champagne? Okay, now suppose you had, wait, Go, we'll go back there. Suppose you want to make champagne. All you do is take that jar, that big, uh, not the one that rejuvenate the, the seeds in it, but the other one. Put some honey in, the real honest to good and sunny. Just enough to make it a little sweet. And leave it for three days, then put some of uh, the um, food coloring red, and you have your pink champagne in three or four days. But don't keep it too long, something happens. <laughs> I mean, you know, because it gets stronger and stronger. It becomes just like, like ginger ale, but if you keep it too long, it becomes, I don't know what else. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, you can experiment with it. Okay, now we're going to come to the, uh, what it does. This is what it does. I showed you what it was. This woman came for the candida. She had struggled for five years with all these problems. Energy, she didn't have any energy. She was executive. She couldn't work. She had to give up a job. Her face broke out. She'd been treated and treated for five years, mind you. And matter of fact, she says, at my age, what can I do? Because people are afraid. They think they got some incurable disease. And she was ready for suicide in only three weeks. Go ahead completely cleared up, three weeks. That's all you need, is three weeks with, that, with these allergies. Any you so, three weeks, okay? And now the, the other fellow, he had psoriasis, completely covered his body with these sores, itching, scratching, bleeding. And he came, of course, from New York, and he didn't have any money, and he was uh, having to be a computer man, so I said, get to work, and we'll give you the business. <laughs> so naturally, it stayed longer. It stayed two months. And I think he goofed on a way because the thing was clear enough very quickly. There's no, there's no big deal, you know, in having these problems, really. It's the quickest thing you can imagine, okay? 
Now that woman had cancer, also suffered. After they operated, would not heal, just would not heal. And of course, naturally, uh, she was concerned about it, it might go in her eye or something. And she stayed with us, like, yes, three weeks. She put polis on it too, polis for the wheatgrass. You know, crushed wheatgrass, put, put it on it. Cleaned up completely in three weeks. And I mean, this is exciting because you see it on the surface. So much better to see things, okay? And this man had a, a very serious problem with AIDS. And he had an area, you know, about, you know, I worked with AIDS for about five years. And the only problem that I can't do research with, with him, because when they get better so quick, that they go off, this man went off to, to Sweden to help AIDS people there. And this has been very hard for me to bear because I want to do the research till they're completely clear. And they don't stay long enough to do it because they get better so quick. One man, he would stay with us in Puerto Rico, because Puerto Rico is much healthier than even uh, out other places because it's so clean air on the ocean, of course, naturally. And he says, I feel, I can't, I can't stand, I feel light. So what's happening to me? I feel so light. I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm just flying almost. He says, and he was a young person. He was about 39 years old. So I never felt like that before. And he had AIDS, and they said, you've got to die. You know, that kind of thing. It's ridiculous. And this mother happens to be sick. When she came to us, to Boston, for quite a period, she stayed as staff, by the way. And she says, I'm not going to have, I'm not going to get married and have children unless I'm healthy. When she got healthy, got married, had a child, the child is about 10 years old now, never had a cold, never had anything, any kind of problem, absolutely nothing. Okay? This little, little guy just got through his energy soup. <laughs> you know, this is so exciting to me because when I was in Puerto Rico, uh, I had this mother came in. She says, my little boy, she was nursing. He's only uh, four months old. You think I dare to give him energy soup? I said, why not? Try it. He can't, he can't hurt it because it's not medicine. She gave them. I never saw anything lapse so quick in my life, you know. He says, my goodness, I've been given that energy soup every day because he's not satisfied anymore with my, just my milk. And you have, you have no idea how they love it. And the almond milk, the children, they thrive on it. They act so different. They're always happy. They don't fuss. They don't cry. Okay. Now, I've, I've been in uh, India for a month research in Bombay Hospital, big hospital, with 53 patients. I can call them patients. I had the, uh, this particular fellow had diabetes. Eyes were given out. He had a heart condition. He was 21. He had diabetes since he was one year old. And of course, the doctors always examined all those people, heart condition. Uh, asthma completely disappeared within eight days. And then you have this person, took six weeks to get off insulin. His eyes improved. He was going to the class in about 10 days, less than 10 days, really. And he's been suffering for all these years in bed with, with this heart affliction. And I could go on and on. Now, this happens to be the monkey, which had cancer on the top of his head. The people that gave it to me have been feeding it cooked food, naturally. They're very sensitive, these we call woolly monkeys. So I brought it to the uh, hospital and I said, I want you to examine the see if that's cancer. Examined it, took, took uh, some biopsy, whatever. Yes, cancer. I have to operate. I says, oh no, you're not operating. So I says, but I'll bring it back within two, three, three, four weeks. So I, brought, I uh, gave it the living food and brought it back, no lump. The lump disappeared. And uh, they, they looked at it and said, where's the lump? And I didn't say anything anymore. And then I said, well, I'll bring it back again. So within three, four weeks again, gave it the cooked food, brought it back with the lump again. So that's why I said there's no cure for anything. The body has to be given opportunity for self-healing. 
And if you don't provide the environment, you can't do it. And, and then, go ahead. She becomes so beautiful. I had her for nine years. She become a little girl with a dress on, clean dress every day. And she walked on two feet. I didn't like to walk on her, on her hands anymore. And she was, I carry her, she always got on my arm. I took her outside and carried her to places. And you never sound like it, how she evolved. So fantastically intelligent. She could sense what I was thinking even. You know, it's just so exciting to work with animals. And this happens to be a doctor. He works with AIDS. Of course, naturally, I work with these doctors that work with AIDS now. And I just given them a seminar for a symposium for many medical doctors in, in San Francisco. Well, on this we call uh, works, um, the, you know, the workshop, the living food, three, four hour workshop. And I'm invited every year to them. This happens to be a doctor came to Boston for two weeks because he said he had this, we call, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. In two weeks, he couldn't believe what happened to him, two weeks. And he's fracturing, and, and naturally, I was practicing in New York, okay? And then now I'm, we're going to show you what living food is. I mean, what kind of ways you can prepare the food. I don't mean that we serve that kind of food. The students prepare this food, by the way. When anybody have allergies, they can't have all this array of food. That's why I've been sick so many years. I eat very, very simple. That's why I go on this energy soup, because I can get sick anytime. I have to work 18 hours a day, seven days a week, especially running two centers, writing two more books. And I can't afford to eat, you know, just eat. And I'll show you the, uh, the different meals are prepared. So sky's the limit that you can prepare with living food. This happens to be the, the bread, the dehydrated bread. So you see that the different things you can prepare. That's having seed cheese decorated. And of course, we always in our centers, both centers in Puerto Rico and Boston, serve first the energy soup, and then the salad, and anything else. Let's have a sea cheese, too. And here you see, you can prepare a beautiful meal with champagne there, as you see on the left-hand side, for company. There's nothing should be prevent you from having a complete, beautiful meal with living food. And now we're going into the call partying. We know what partying means. Candy, cookies, pies, cakes. Nothing cooked. Don't get excited. Nothing cooked. <laughs> no, because we, we know that would be defeat our purpose, wouldn't it? No, we, we, have, we can have anything. We can do anything with living food. That's how to be my birthday. That's the music we are still celebrating. And I said again, the sky's the limit that you can prepare. This happens to be in Spain. We, we gave a, a workshop for 30 Swedes, Swedish people came before they opened their center in Sweden. And right there in the big hotel, we had prepared a meal and eat in one hour because we ate in a restaurant this big hotel. It was quite a thing, wasn't it? <laughs> we really did it. And this happens to be uh, in uh, Texas. I had, uh, we prepared a wedding feast with living food there. And reduced way down to less than one third cost. And everybody danced all night without being tired. <laughs> now, another thing I want to point out to you why these conditions get better so quick. There's no miracle, absolutely. Why? Because you have energy in that wheatgrass there. Look at the energy in wheatgrass. You should enlarge that one, you know it? That is what gives you that self-healing. Because you are energy, you are, do you know you have electrical force? 
you can, your body is similar to the, to the whole universe, the whole planet. And at the same time, you can even, the energy or the electrical force you have inside could, could light the whole city. Did you know that? And you've got to have that energy. And this is what living food means. Now, okay, that's wheatgrass. And there's your greens. These sunflower greens over there. Look at them. Nothing but energy. Yes. Okay. This happens to be, I believe it's squash, isn't it? Yeah. That's uncooked squash, filled with energy. Maybe it's not organic, not, not as good as what we grow, huh? <laughs> and this is your cooked squash. Where's the energy? Huh? Yeah. Now, you see, you've got to wake up to that fact that as the energy force, which you are, you've got to replenish that energy. The air is getting worse. The uh, water is absolutely, let's say, uh, unhealthy. The sunshine's having problems, isn't it? Huh? Ozone now is coming into, you've got to be careful not to stay in the sun too long. You'll get cancer. OK, I think we're going to Puerto Rico now, I think, pretty soon. Now, there's your cells. Now, look at your cells. Which kind of cells do you have? The cells that are falling apart cannot possibly do the job. And the cells has to work with the enzymes. They got to work with the enzymes. The enzymes are the bosses. They do organize. They're the ones say, here, come on, get going. Do this and this. And that's the reason we fall apart. OK? And this happens to be in Singapore. That big uh, factory you see over there, run by that man they are sitting. And he was doing the uh, manufacturing, the cooking insul ins you know, material, pots and pans. He had me stay there for a whole week doing workshops of living food. And he eats living food in a, in a it gets that energy through the uh, blending his food you know, all day. He invites his executives. He says, if you want to accomplish something, clear mind to do it. You got to eat that. And they're doing it. And I also uh, arranged this, um, this particularly busy people, as you get it in the back, the uh, cover, how one can supply complete day for day supply, busy people, completely in charge of your for the whole day, very, very simple. And what is it? Huh? Oh, this is the booklet here, The uh, Miracles of Wheatgrass. Uh, yeah, I'll make an announcement. OK, now, another thing that's important with, with people with allergies is colon. Colon, the three tools they have to recognize is important. First is ease to adjust nourishment through blending especially. Second is cleaning the colon. Thirdly, stop worrying about your problems. Mentally, stop worrying. And think about health, think about what you want, OK? And there's only 5% nominal colons you saw in our, in our society, 5% only. And that was done by experts scientifically. I do these workshops throughout the world. I have them covered 35 countries. And for this reason, that I feel that people must have a choice. They must see that there's, a, there's an alternative way and there's a medical way. Make the decision what you want to go. But there must be at least that kind of choice. And I have said, you know, here it's been very slow, and I had to stay and be in these other countries for so long. Now I'm back, OK? This man I was be, I think, 97, I think. And he does workshops. He's been on living food 15 years. Nobody needs to get old. Old age is, to me, you know, when they say, oh, I'm 80, so what? You know, and, and because it's best years of your life to be old. Really is. I have learned, and I'm ready for action. It's best years of my life now. Because I know that I've learned so many lessons. 
and believe me, a lot of lessons. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and and this happens to be Puerto Rico now. Puerto Rico is a real, you know, I observe my own health also. When I'm in Boston, I go, 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 day and night, and I go to Puerto Rico, I go, go, go too there. But I feel much better because the air, and we have this ocean which we can swim in, and the wonderful fruit is fantastic. And you can really, on my little dog there, Precious, and you know, and she, uh, she and I were live with uh, fruitarians for three weeks just to experiment, but it doesn't really work that way. It's better to use the uh, the greens and uh, and some seeds. We, do, we experiment all the time. That happens to be our coconut. We have we buy, and we have our own coconuts on the place. We raised our um, uh, uh, papaya, little tiny plants we planted three months ago, and they now have little papayas on it. Grow so fast there. Okay, fruit is fantastic there. Okay. Of course, we serve you know some, uh, but we more we more. Uh, eliminating the, the vegetables from there because the vegetables come most of them come from from here and they radiate it and whatever we discourage vegetables so we use the garden indoor things and fruit mostly okay this happens to be a person that overweight and we have just finished with a with a, a singer by the name of Angela Fillmore, Billmore, she lost 65 pounds within a period of, of six weeks. And uh, it is no, no big deal losing weight, but permanently not on a diet. This is not a diet. This is back to health. The body normalizes. If you're too thin, you, get, you put on weight. If you're too fat, the weight will melt away. So it is. Okay. This little child never had a cooked food since he was born. Okay. And this is what our, our, I haven't showed the, the before and after. This is before the uh, we, we planted the papaya trees <laughs> about three months ago, and now they they way 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 up. And uh, our, our indoor gardens are similar to that, but we have it outside. In Puerto Rico, this is Puerto Rico, the greens and sprouts. And I want to tell you a little story about this uh, person. He's in Boston, young man that does wheatgrass and uh, growing greens. He says, "I want to do an experiment. How how cheap I can live on this food." So he took three things for four months. He took the wheatgrass, the rejuvelac and the wheat seed only. He chewed the wheat seed, sprouted, and he chewed the wheat grass as well, discarded the pulp, and drank the rejuvelac four months on less than 25 cents a day. And that's how he looked when he got through. Never was hungry, and he was lifting weights as well. You see what I mean? Why? why, why this is nourishment. This is fuel. This is not just eating. Okay? I think that's all. Okay, the questions. <laughs>